think Oakland is way different than LA. It doesn't have that glitz and glam and you're trying to get attention from Hollywood. You just focus on what you do. And I think that's like the, the real key of why they're so strong. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Accolades Conversation Series, in which I talk to some of my favorite artists about who or what they would recommend me checking out. Make sure to subscribe or hit that like button. In episode 39, I spoke to Brian Babylon, a comedian and radio host from Chicago. He currently hosts and produces the Babylon Beat on KBLA. Babylon is a regular panelist on NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, a regular host of the Mott Storytelling event in Chicago, has appeared on the national broadcast, and is a peering contributor to Chicago IDs. From 2009 to 2015, he co-hosted the Morning AMP radio show on Vocalo with Molly Adams and regularly appeared on WBEZ talk shows. As an actor, he appeared on Inside Amy Schumer. He was also on the production team of Why with Hannibal Burris. I spoke to Brian about Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Born in Oakland, California, he is the cousin of seminal West Coast rapper Ice Cube and began his career writing lyrics for Ice Cube's group The Lynch Mob. In 1991, with the help of Ice Cube, Dell released his first solo album, I Wish My Brother George Was Here, at the age of 18. The album was a commercial success, largely due to the popularity of the hit single, Miss Double Lena. No Need for Alarm saw the introduction of Oakland click, Hieroglyphics. In 1993, Dell collaborated with the band Dinosaur Jr. to create the song, Missing Link, featured on the Judgment Night soundtrack. In 1999-2000, Dell collaborated with Kid Koala and Dan the Automator as a supergroup Deltron 3030, whose debut self-titled album was released in May 2000. Dell collaborated with virtual band Gorillaz on two songs on their debut album, Clint Eastwood and Rock the House, both of which became singles and videos and achieved chart success. This is what Brian had to say about Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. If I had to give accolades to one artist in, in particular, that would be Dell, the funky homo sapien, a.k.a. Daddy Hyro, a.k.a. Dell Tronzi, a.k.a. Dell Diesel from the Hieroglyphics crew. He's been doing hip hop now almost 30 years, man, from Oakland, the West Coast. I'm from Chicago. So for me, I never got caught up in the East Coast, West Coast thing. I was right in the middle and I got to like hear both. But I, I've had this argument before when people try to say, what's the Mount Rushmore or what's the top four rappers of all time on the West Coast? And people always try to put Dr. Dre in there. Like, first of all, Dr. Dre's not a rapper. He's a producer. He's a horrible rapper, but he's not a rapper. Dr. Dre can't rap, okay? Easy e couldn't rap, right? Uh, and a lot of people don't know that Dell is Ice Cube's cousin. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Dell is Ice Cube's first cousin. And Ice Cube knew that Dell rapped up in Oakland, and they would bring him down to L.A. back when they were doing N.W.A. and stuff like that. Before the G-Funk era came out, Dell was doing funk. Dale the Funky Homo Sapien. He was sampling all those George Clinton samples, all those bass lines. Before that was even the West Coast sound, Dale was doing that and the High Road crew was doing that. And I think he doesn't get his accolades because he's still relevant 30 years later. Hieroglyphics is still doing a thing 30 years later. They might not be doing Super Bowl shows, but they can go globally, still have a quality show, still put out quality music. They've been independent since the mid 90s, since they left Jive Zamba. That was Souls of Mischief's first label was Jive. I think Casual was on Jive, Dale was on Electra. But once those major labels deals were over with, they got independent and used their energy and brand to still stay relevant and keep that money for themselves. And that was before internet independency. They did that in the old days when it meant something. Hardcore, hardcore. Daddy High Road deal. I just happen to have on my hat right now. That's so funny. I was up there and I got a whole bunch of High Road patches. That was <laughs> I started getting into Dell when Deltron 3030 30. came out. Yeah. That was huge for me when I was uh, 16, 17. Because mm -hmm. you're talking about like uh, uh, the G Funk era before G Funk was G Funk. What song would you recommend to me when it comes to Dell from that era? Mr. Dabalima is like. The Oh, okay, yeah, from the yeah, album. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, that's one Mr. Dumbly. That's just fun. You know, that's the first thing. And then he kind of left the G-Funk era when it started getting popular and getting to his own sound when he connected with the Gorillas. Mm -hmm. That's just the next level MC that can get on any situation. What would your favorite song or favorite thing from him be? Oh, or is that a very hard question to ask? <laughs> 
I would say Catch a Bad One from No Need for Alarm. That album was is crazy. Thank yous. I mean, I pretty much liked that whole No Need for Alarm album because it was, I remember buying that tape at least three times. You know, I, I'm of the age where you bought tapes, dog. And then uh, a lot of his independent music, like Both Sides of the Brain. And it's always a wordplay. It's very high elevated rap. So you have to have a vocab. You have to have lived life to get the, the nuances of what he's talking about. You can't be no dummy. You know, I hate to say that shit, but that's just how it is. Your explanation sounds very similar to a friend of mine that, that I had an interview with about the coup. Uh, which yeah, is kind, of Riley, similar, yeah. kind of a similar story in some ways. Also from Oakland, I, I think Oakland is way different than L.A. It doesn't have that glitz and glam and you're trying to get attention from Hollywood. You just focus on what you do. And I think that's like the, the real key of why they're so strong. And, you know, before I even did comedy, I was trying to make beats. But then when I started hanging out with just different producers and seeing what they like, I realized, like, you know what? Focus on what I like to do, what sounds dope. Don't be apologetic. Don't think it's too artsy. Just do it and just keep making more shit, mm -hmm. you know? I want to thank my guest, comedian Brian Babylon, for his time. And next week on episode 40, I'm talking to another comedian, Matt Besser, about the importance of Dell Close in the improv theater. Yes, another Dell. Two Dells in a row. Anyway, check out my book, Accolades, which you can still find on CrateRecords.be, or I want to refer you to the videos of these interviews on our YouTube channel, Crate Records. Thanks for listening.